Thai, why don't you throw the waste water in the wash basin? It'll save you so much more effort. Well, thank you for the suggestion, Anvita, but I would rather save water than saving some effort. But you're still throwing it away, aren't you? No, well, that looks that way to you, but I'm actually saving water. Now you're confusing me. <laughs> no. Well, look at it this way, okay? When I washed the vegetables, the water became slightly muddy. This dirty water cannot be used for anything else like cooking, drinking or washing other things. So, we just throw it into the sink where it will become the part of sewage or waste water in the drainage. Hmm? But, when I pour it out into the soil, it will be used for plants for their growth. Then, I don't have to water those plants separately by using fresh stock of water from the tap. The dirt in waste water which I threw in the yard is just tiny soil and vegetable pieces which will not harm the growing plants. Okay? So, you see a little extra effort but lot of good water saved. Get it? But why do you need to save water when it's available continuously on the tap all the time? Well, indeed we are lucky to have continuous supply of clean usable water so effortlessly whenever we require. But many people in various parts of cities, towns and many villages have to struggle really hard to get sufficient water for their daily basic needs. Simply because the stock of water in nature is falling short to support increasing population. But how? I've read somewhere that almost two-thirds of the earth's surface is covered by water. Yes, indeed. But do you know that 97% of it is in the form of oceans and seas? This water is saline and very salty, so cannot be used for daily basic needs like drinking, washing, cleaning, cooking, etc. But what about the other 3%? Well, it is termed as fresh water and large amount of it is present in frozen form as ice at the poles. Quite a large portion is trapped beneath the soil layers as groundwater. Only small portion is available in the forms of rivers, lakes, streams, ponds, reservoirs, etc. which are directly accessible to us as natural water resources for use. Then what about water that we receive in for rain? Rainfall is the phenomenon occurring due to the water cycle. Hmm? Water from all the natural sources which I just explained to you as well as from other sources undergoes evaporation due to the heat energy mostly coming from the sun. The water vapour then being warm and lighter than water rises up in the atmosphere. Hmm? It reaches higher altitudes where the air is cooler and undergoes the process of condensation to form tiny and micro droplets of water which appear as clouds floating in the sky. As the amount of water vapour in the atmosphere increases, the humidity in the air increases. Fine droplets of water in the clouds fuse or coalesce together to form larger and heavier droplets of water which fall down to the surface of the earth due to the gravity. This is what we call rainfall or precipitation. Thus, rainfall is not adding any new water to our sources but just recycling the water from hydrosphere. Okay? What is hydrosphere? It is the term used to refer to all the water present on our planet in the form of ice, liquid water and water vapour either on the land surface or underground or in the air. That's interesting. I never thought so deeply about water. Right. But now it's high time we all should start thinking about it and do not take this precious resource for granted. Hmm. I still can't understand why is there scarcity or shortage in water supply of usable water in many areas. Over a period of time, many things have changed drastically. With tremendous increase in population, the consumption of water for daily needs such as drinking, washing, cleaning, cooking by humans has increased in many folds. Apart from this, all over the world, a large expanse of lands which were covered by forest have been used for construction of roads, railways, industries or residential projects and farming to support increasing civilization. Such large-scale deforestation has adversely affected the natural climatic cycle. Hmm? This in turn has impacted the nature and amount of rainfall erratically. Many regions have experienced untimely rains, droughts 
and other regions have suffered from heavy floods during the monsoon seasons in recent years. Pollution of natural water bodies has also increased. All these factors are responsible for generating scarcity of clean, usable fresh water in many regions. Taidin, what can we do to resolve this situation and reduce the shortage of water? There are many things that we can do by being mindful of small things in our day to day life. To begin with, we can avoid wasteful use of water or use water sparingly. Simple things like uh, not leaving the tap running while brushing the teeth or bathing can also save a lot of water from being wasted, right? We can also reuse and recycle water whenever possible, okay? Just like the way that you use the waste water from washed vegetables to water the plants. <laughs> yes, indeed. So I try to do my bit whenever I can. I too will be cautious while using water, henceforth so as to not waste any. What else can we do? In various cities, and towns, large amount of the rainwater that falls on the land surface is simply wasted as it runs off the top layer of roads, footpaths, building compounds, grounds, etc. and enters in drainage or sewers. Similarly, in regions where deforestation has taken place, the rainwater flows the top layer of soil causing soil erosion and eventually via rivers enters into seas. We can develop methods that can block this water at appropriate locations and help it pre-collate in the soil so that groundwater reserves can increase. Hmm? We can also develop strategies to store rainwater wherever possible. This is the reason that even government is promoting rainwater harvesting systems in many cities and towns. Cool, but we should also take measures to reduce water pollution, isn't it? Yes, absolutely correct. We must maintain the water in our rivers and lakes in better condition by reducing the dumping of wastewater from cities, towns and villages into them. Water pollution is not only harmful for humans but also has adverse effect on life of other plants and animals. There by degrading the delicate balance in our ecosystem. Getting it? I have read somewhere that water is life. It is said so because bodies of water of most the living organisms contain almost 75% of water by weight. And I know that we can live longer without food, but without water to drink, we cannot survive long. However, I did not have much knowledge about natural resources of water available to us and their importance. Thank you so much for explaining this to me and explaining it so well. I promise I'll try to save more water and I'll explain this and advise it to my friends as well. That's great. Well, I'm really happy that you have given it a thought and plan to take actions accordingly. Okay, I have an idea. Why don't you prepare a chart of whatever you plan to save water and meanwhile, I'll go prepare lunch. Okay. Summary. Almost two third of the earth's surface is covered by water, most of which is in the form of salt water bodies such as oceans and seas. Water is an important natural resource and various sources of water are available to us in our environment. Fresh water available in the form of rivers, lakes, streams, ponds, reservoirs, underground water, etc. which are directly accessible to be used for basic life needs like drinking, washing, cleaning, cooking, etc. are our natural water resources. The term hydrosphere is used to refer to all the water present on our planet in the form of ice, liquid water and water vapor either on the land surface or underground or in air. Every year we receive rainfall which replenishes fresh water in our natural resources. Rainfall occurs as a result of natural water cycle of evaporation and condensation of water from surface of all water bodies. Water is essential resource for supporting human life and life of other organisms. Various measures that can be taken to ensure continuous supply of good water to all the regions in our country include reducing water pollution and water wastage, promoting conservation of water by spreading awareness, improving natural water resources with the help of methods like afforestation, rainwater harvesting, etc. 
What activity consumes or uses the most amount of water in your house? What changes can you bring about to reduce waste of water in your house? Do you know which reservoir supplies water to the areas where you live? What is the chemical formula of water? Why is water termed as universal solvent? Do humans use more water during their life as compared to other animals? If so, why? In case you still have some difficulties in understanding water as vital resource, then please go through this session again and also read the chapter from your textbook.